Welcome to the NovaWorks Learning Center. In this video, we will demonstrate how to tag a simple 8K cover page for inline XBRL. Typically, the XDX Setup Wizard will tag all of your cover page elements automatically, which we demonstrated in the XDX Setup Wizard tutorial. However, there may be times when the wizard misses one or more data points or when you choose to not automatically tag the cover page. What we will demonstrate in this video is how to use the inline tagging tools to add XDX tagging for the cover page facts for an 8K. You will then be able to use this process to tag the cover page for all form types. Let's talk about the different types of data you might find on a cover page. First, there are ballot boxes, which are used to represent fact data for elements with a Boolean data type. Ballot boxes are represented as checkbox characters on the cover page. Filers typically use Unicode characters, wingdings, or a symbol font, or just bracket characters to represent checkboxes. Inline XBRL works best if you use the Unicode versions of the ballot boxes, though XDX will process tagging around other kinds as well. We recommend that you use the Unicode characters if possible. Another reason to use Unicode characters is they display consistently across all browsers. On an 8K, ballot box data will be tagged for elements like the written communications or soliciting material elements. Other elements like document annual report use ballot boxes in other forms. For ballot boxes, you tag the ballot box character. An empty ballot box is the equivalent to false for fact data. A checked ballot box is the equivalent to true for fact data. The next type of data you'll find on a cover page is textual. Textual data covers most of the data you will tag. This includes the registrant name, address, period of the report, security titles, and basically any data that has corresponding text on a cover page. For textual data, you tag the text for the fact. And finally, there are yes-no questions, which are on the cover pages for 10K and 10Q filings. There are no yes-no questions on an 8K. An example of an element that uses yes-no for the data would be Entity Current Reporting Status. These questions are usually represented with similar checkbox characters followed by the word yes and the word no. Rather than tagging the checkbox character, you tag the yes or the no. Now that we know the different types of data to expect on the cover page, let's proceed to GoFiler. We have open a simple 8K document for a single registrant. We already set up the taxonomy information for the document using the XDX setup wizard, which was covered in the previous tutorial. To start, you need to know the data required to be visible on the cover page for an inline XPRL filing. We have a free cover page tagging fact sheet that you can download from our reference library at www.novaworksoftware.com to help you identify the data points and the elements to use. The first thing we will tag is the form type. Using the mouse or keyboard, select only the submission type on the cover page. This is 8K for this document. If you are filing an amendment, the submission type would be 8K A. Select only the form name. Make sure not to include the word form. Then go to the XDX markup ribbon and click the inline fact button. This opens the inline tagging tool. This is the tool we will use to tag each fact on the cover page. We can set the element information for the fact as well as the context information. Let's start. First enter the element name into the element field. If we don't know the element name, we can search for it by clicking on the button to the right of the element field. Enter some key words for the search. Click Search. Here is the document type element, which we can see is the submission type. Click OK. And the dialog is populated with the information for the element. None of the options for precision, negated, heading, or totals are necessary for cover page elements, so we can leave all of those alone. You can enter the label for the element if you want. Leaving the label field blank will just use the standard label for the element when you make your inline XBRL. For the most part, using standard labels for cover page data is fine. Click the Next button to set the context information. 
Now, for each of these facts, you want to use the period of the report for the context. You can enter the information into the type, date, and end date fields, or we can click on this little button to open a library of contexts that are already available in the document. We haven't made any contexts yet, so let's enter the data manually. The type is duration. We know this because the element's period type is duration and, as mentioned before, these facts use the period of the report for their context. The Start Date field is the starting date of the period. Use the calendar to pick the starting date. The End Date field is the ending date of the period. Use the calendar to pick the ending date. For simple 8Ks, there are no dimensions or members to worry about. If you have co-registrants or are tagging a cover page for dual-listed companies, you may have to add dimensional information. We'll cover that in a separate tutorial. Click Next to proceed to the next step. This last screen lets you set footnote references if there are any. We don't have any, so we'll leave this option blank. And there's also an option to run the inline tagging tool again. You would use this if the data you selected was used for more than one fact. In this case, we have one fact for the document type element, so we'll leave this option unchecked. Click Finish. So the XDX engram was added around the form type. You can see the little cross icon appear that marks the location of the XDX information. If we click on that data, you can see the XDX information in the Management View window. Let's tag another data point. Select the date of the report. Click Inline Fact. Select the element. For this item, it is the Document Period End Date element. Click Next. Now we can select our context from the library by clicking on the button to the right of the preset field. Our context is in the list. Select it. Click OK. It cloned the context information for us. Click Next. And Finish. The date of the report is now tagged also. You can use the inline tagging tool to tag the remaining facts on the cover page. I'm now going to show you another method to tag data that is a little faster. This method works once you have started your tagging process. It uses the copy ngram function. Right-click on the date of report that we just tagged. When you right-click inside of an ngram, the copy ngram item is available on the menu. Select it. Then use the mouse or keyboard to select the next piece of data to tag. This time it is the registrant name. It's important to note that the text you select for the registrant name element must exactly match the name under which the company was registered with the SEC. Remember that the text you select will become the fact value for the chosen element. If the fact data for the entity registrant name element doesn't match the SEC's official registrant name, your filing will be suspended by the Edgar system. Continuing on, now paste or control V to paste the engram. Looking in the management view, you can see the engram information is now applied to the register name as well. Click on the element name in the management view. Now change the element from document period end date to entity registrant name. Click OK. The XDX engram now has our new element. Using this method can save a little time since we don't need to set the context information each time. The state of jurisdiction, file number, and IRS number all follow the same process, as does the address and telephone number.
Remember for the address to separately tag each item. There are elements for each line in the address, city, state, and zip code. For the phone number, there's also separate elements for the area code and the local number. If the registrant has a former name or address, you should tag that as well. If you don't have a former name or address, you don't need to tag anything. Let's look at the ballot boxes. For our sample, we use the Unicode characters for the ballot boxes. One is checked for written communications pursuant to Rule 425, and the others are unchecked. These items correspond to their own required element, so you must tag each one. To tag the ballot box, select only the ballot box in the document. Now you can use either the inline tagging tool or the copy ngram method to tag the data. We'll show the inline tagging tool again. Enter the appropriate element. Click Next. Enter the context. Click Next, and then click Finish. Repeat the process for each ballot box item. The Emerging Growth Company checkboxes are also ballot boxes, so you would do the same for them. Select only the ballot box character and tag it with the appropriate element. The final part of the cover page is the securities table. The data in this table is the same as the other textual data. Our sample has a single security that is traded on one exchange using a trading symbol. For other examples that have multiple securities and multiple exchanges, 
And for information on how to use the No Trading Symbol Flag element, see our other cover page tagging tutorials. To tag this one, we'll use the same process. Select the data and use the inline tagging tool or the copy and paste engram method. Once we have all the data points tagged, our cover page is complete. That concludes our simple 8K cover page tutorial. Thanks for watching.